Chapter 4, we're going to be taking the second uh, part of uh, the uh, the Chapter 3 assignment and bringing it into a drawing. So, inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS, you have quite a few existing templates. Some of them are better than others. Um, I have, okay, so on this system, um, I have all my templates and somewhere I turned off the, uh, the default. So, if you have a standard drawing, it should come up and ask for the part location. Oh, sheet format and size. And we're just going to, uh, if you have uh, only show standard formats checked, then you're going to see the ISO. And we're going to uncheck so that we can see the ANSI landscape. So one of the other uh, reasons for uh, creating your own template is there's a lot of wasted space down here. We have about a third, maybe at least a quarter of our drawing that's unusable, uh, drawing sheets that's unusable because of all this information. Some of it we may need, and this could be a first sheet, and then the additional sheets could be reduced down, or we would manage to identify the, um, the most critical information and build that in. So that'll be a later video. So we have uh, multiple ways to create this, uh, this drawing sheet. We can open up a, an individual part, bring one file in, and then save it. And each part gets its own drawing document. I tend to prefer having sub-assemblies as complete drawing packages, which speeds up the print process, being able to select and keeping like information together. Um, so as a default, when it's uh, when the software first starts you're going to go into model view and that one's probably the most common so if i browse and then i need to find my way to do my parts and that was in chapter three and since this is on a uh, cloud drive, not everything is uh, is available just yet. So our first uh, item was uh, 328. And so when I select that, it's going to ask me first for the configurations, if there are any. And we'll see those in the uh, the Chapter 5 assignment as a, as a method of managing parts. So create multiple views would be nice so that I can get my front, my top, right, and isometric views in the uh, in the first go around. Um, for mirror, uh, I don't recognize that one so that must have been new for 2019. We'll see if it carries over into 2020. Import options if there are annotations, anything that came from the, uh, the part or that we inserted into the part that we had intended to to use and then the display style typically we're going to do I like hidden lines removed if there's information that is going to be helpful then we could have hidden lines visible or shaded but keep in mind that if you are going to make um, uh, print packages hard copy print packages that the shade is going to take up a lot of ink so uh, you got to kind of uh, uh, gauge how, uh, how how useful that's going to be using the uh, the sheet scale. So we'll talk about sheet scale in a second. The uh, projected view, true to view, if we are looking at isometric or out of position, uh, cosmetic thread quality. Uh, if we've used Whole Wizard, it'll have cosmetic threads. Um, Interesting that neither one of those is looking checked, so I guess it defaults to one. And then, is there something that should be excluded from automatic update? And last, save view as if you want to um, extract just that, uh, that bit of information. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now when you do this, you, well, obviously our scale is a little bit big, and there may be information that we don't need. So from the um, 
the side view? Are we going to be able to put any dimensions, any useful dimensions on that, or is it just for reference? I don't know that that's going to uh, to help me. I'll leave it for now, and we'll see what we can uh, do with the dimensions. So, for the assignment, oh, and this is a little bit big, so I'm going to see what half scale looks like. And that shrinks it down to where it fits into our work area a little bit better. And I can move these around. Each of the views is aligned, so as the front view moves, the top view will stay in alignment. And as the front view moves, then the right view will stay in alignment. They can move somewhat independently up and down, left and right. But that's about the, uh, the extent of what we get. So, um, based on, uh, on this information, I'm not looking for uh, full detail drawing, but there should be enough information to um, be able to make this part. So let's go with a across. And right now we are in inches, pounds, and seconds, so you pretty much have to decide, since some of these parts were in metric, uh, if you want to detail in metric, go ahead and detail in metric. Otherwise, we're just going to uh, stay with the inches in two decimal place. And so if I put a few for the width, and that's actually not the depth that I wanted. And if we had a, a center mark, which would be a good thing to uh, to put in there. So at least initially I'm not thinking through all of my detail process. I'm just going to put a few dimensions on to get it started. So 16 degrees for the angle, and I guess I drug that just a little too far. Let's see if we can change that on the leaders. don't think that one's going to come back around, so I'm going to delete it. <clears throat> Go back into the smart dimension. Let's make sure I stay in between the, uh, the extension lines. Okay, so for what we're doing, that uh, that will get us started. At this point, I could save this as P3-28 and open up another another drawing template and go to the next uh, uh, next part and save again. It depends on the company policy strategies for creating documents. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and add a sheet and it's going to carry over. My next method of inserting a drawing is to, or inserting a part into a drawing, is to go to the view palette. Since nothing is currently open, then we need to make the selection. Hopefully it will default back to where we were. I don't have to navigate back. And then I'm going to pick 329 and open. So the advantage of the view palette is it's going to show us previews of those views that what would I like to be the primary or the front view? So if I bring that one out and then go to move, we're going to start into a projected mode where this is going to allow me to click and place additional views. And when I'm done, I hit the green check mark. All right, so same thing. We're going to apply a few dimensions. There we go, let it catch up. Diameter. I'll set the, uh, the depth. And a couple of widths. Alright, so I mentioned center lines and center marks. So this would be a good place to introduce those. Up on our annotations tab, go into the center mark. And when I pick, then we can accept. And if I go to center line, then I'm going to pick an edge and an edge. And that's going to give me a center line through that geometry, which I can then stretch to go through the, uh, the entire, uh, the entire uh, body. So And let's see if we had a little bit of a, of a step there. So that one went to radius, so that was just uh, halfway. 
Uh, that one I would prefer to have as a diameter, so under the dimension, selecting the dimension, going into the leaders tab, and then I can switch it over to a diametral dimension. And then somewhere, nope, let me put the, uh, say the width, and then without getting too far into the geometry, if I wanted to position it off of center line, then I can do the, the half. And that gives us some control over the, the position of that geometry. And we have the width. We have also needed depth for the, uh, for the notch. All right, so something along those lines. All right, next sheet. Um, I have my Windows Explorer open over here, so we're going to find 329. And when I drag and drop 329 into the view window, it takes me back into model view. And I'll create the, uh, the four views. And did not get that one selected. There we go. I'll go ahead and accept it. Oh, I guess I just did that one. So control Z. 330 would be the uh, preferred then. <laughs> All right, so we'll get those views in. So pretty easy to manipulate the, uh, the geometry once we've uh, kind of gone that route. All right, smart dimension. This one was a little bit weird. So since we designed for uh, convenience and put that slot, I think I want to go ahead and correct for that uh, that geometry. Uh, we'll do that now. So we'll get a diameter. Also, I am in the ISO mode. So that ends up being a, a half inch. Uh, with ISO, if I wanted to be an ANSI, we're going to switch over the document properties, look at the drafting standard, and then select ANSI. Hit OK. And then any modifications that we make to tolerances or to dimensions, that'll, that'll pick up as a modified ANSI uh, standard. When we do the, uh, the whole locations, we'll go to whole callout, and that will give me a little more information as to the depth and additional geometry. So this is one of those cases, I don't know that um, having the hidden lines visible is going to be better. Since this is a flat bottom, maybe it's a little more descriptive. And the uh, group, there's not really anything that's going to, uh, to show up. But if we were to switch it to parent style, which is, I thought that would, be, would have been the default. As we shift through those, if I come back to the parent, the front view then we're going to be able to shade it with edges, just sh shaded, hidden lines uh, removed, hidden lines visible, and then the last one, the full wireframe. All right, so that's probably, there's, there's places where that's useful, but that's probably going to be the most confusing. So uh, let's see, what did we uh, need here? So a center line, and then if I go in between those two, and it didn't pick, so oh, I didn't pick it completely. Okay, oh, and since it left that one, let's go ahead and delete that out of the mix. We'll extend this out a little bit. And then can do the same types of, of things with our dimensions. All right, so one of the issues here, even with the uh, the half inch, is this doesn't quite come to a uh, to a tangency. So, since I made that selection, one of the other things that we could do is come around to, and that gives us to the center line, which would be okay. If I was going to reference for depth, I can I hit escape. I'm going to hold down the shift button. And that's going to give us an actual depth from the top, top of the arc. So we have a couple of different ways to approach, uh, approach that geometry. All right, and then we'll set the angle. And depending on what I select, I'm going to be able to 
um, manage those uh, those geometries. So either way, and then the one that uh, comes up if there's not I guess usable or something convenient, I can always pick the line in its endpoint. Oh, that was in the sketch that we got those. Let's see if I go the other way if it'll give it to me. No, nope, I was looking for the um, the construction arrows, but I'm thinking of the uh, the part sketch. All right, so our next uh, next one, we can do a. Uh, let's see if one of the parts is open. So let's see if I can. Uh, Uh, let's see, what do I want to do there? Just going to minimize that and we'll see if I drag and drop 31 in. And it's having to download that one, so, and we are on the education version. Warning, so, tile horde is not only. So right now my 2019 is on my commercial version and the part was created in the uh, education so it's going to uh, give me that warning uh, tile vertically i'm not getting very very good sizing there so let's move this around a little bit i really just want both of them on the screen and since i collapsed that one now let's try the horizontally all right so when i have uh, multiple objects open uh, of course with the larger screen it'll be a little more useful I can drag and drop, and then when I expand that back out, we're into the create multiple views, and we have the same types of, uh, of geometry. <coughs> All right, so our smart dimensions, we'll put a few on here, line those up. We'll set a, uh, a radius, and what would be useful on uh, on that one. So, other than the uh, than the geometry, I guess we have enough there to uh, to get us started. All right. So, one of the notes that they included in the drawing was across the flats. So if I come over to the dimension text, I can do a, a cross flats. And when I accept, that will be added to the note. Um, also, when we click, there's a little box that pops up, and you have to have that little bit of a pause. And then it will come up, and I can also put in notes higher, lower, to the, uh, to the side. We're also able to put in the parentheses for reference dimensions, ob rounds for inspection dimensions, and adjust the um, uh, the, or the uh, justification. So left, uh, right, uh, right, or center, and then the tolerance type and the units of precision, and then if we set styles or favorites, be able to get back to those quickly. All right, so I don't have any assemblies, but if we had an assembly drawing, we'll have to do that a little later on. If I had an assembly drawing, I could tile it out and bring those parts in, create a new sheet, bring a part in, create a new sheet, bring a part in. The, um, the other method, uh, if we go over to the file explorer within, and I'm not sure, we're probably only going to see the one open, and I could navigate down all through my desktop, so let's not do that. <laughs> uh, again, so um, uh, I can drag and drop from that window, so let's see if, um, reduce that down, we're done with that one, that was 31, I'm going to go ahead and drag in 32, and it's going to warn me again. All right, and then let's see, is it Alt-Tab? Now it takes me through the windows. So Control-Tab will take me through the SolidWorks files. Okay, and then that maximizes so I can, let's tile vertically this time. All right, so since this one is open, I'm also going to be able to see it in the File Explorer underneath the open in SolidWorks. All right, so the ones that are kind of grayed out uh, are 
open in memory because this document is referencing them. The 332 is the one that is actually open and we're working on it so it will be something that I can drag and drop. And we'll set our views and then go ahead and hit OK. Alright, so through with that one, we'll go ahead and stop and let's start with a couple of the, uh, the whole callouts. So 200 through and 200 through, so identical. And then smart dimension, put a few on here. So whichever is the, uh, the more critical values. And we have radius. Again, I want to make that a dimetral, so I'll switch it. And then the full circles, those are going to go, let's get back into the smart dimension. The full circles are going to go in. And arcs are, or partials are going to get radial. <clears throat> All right, so we can kind of clean that up a little bit. And they'll move around a little bit as we adjust. So again, don't, I don't know that, um, these are all going to be, I oh, keep missing that one. All right, so we'll start that way and make sure it highlights. All right, so that we can, uh, I don't know what all of these dimensions are going to be useful. We'll, we'll start thinking more into the manufacturing process on the, uh, the next go around. So I consider this an iterative process. We make a first pass, we get all of our documents, get some basic dimensions in, and then we can uh, can set up for our geometry. So I'm going to continue with the view layout model view is one of the faster. So we made it to 329, or no, 332, 333, and we'll create. And said even if I'm not going to use all of those views, I'm going to go ahead and put them in. So I can speed up the process a little bit by getting into this kind of production line mode of um, we're going to load up all of the other uh, parts. So 34. And we'll accept. And there's going to be a, a limit. Um, Subassemblies, uh, uh, kind of speaking to the um, uh, the assembly drawing package, subassemblies kind of max out. Depending on the complexity, you'll have between uh, five and about twenty parts. All right, so subassembly really is a, is going to be two or more parts. But we get to that point, there's going to be um, be some additional geometry. So let's just say two to 20 parts in a drawing package. Uh, 20 sheets is going to be uh, to, to start um, wearing on the uh, the processor power, having that many documents open in memory, uh, putting all of those details in, going through the process. And let's see, what did I just open? Am I at 35? Get the preview. Okay, so that looks like the one I just opened, so we'll get this one in. Go ahead and accept. Alright, so those are looking a little bigger. Nine. And we'll go to 36. And so I'm going to end up with 12 sheets, and we will have uh, have the dimensions and appropriate uh, details in each of those. So, 37, the interesting one. Uh, 
plus 2, 38. And then we should have the, uh, the couple of sheet metal parts coming up, which is what I want to focus on. And one more. Okay, so with the sheet metal part, one of the first things that I do, I'm more interested in that flat pattern. If you didn't create this as a sheet metal part, that's okay. Uh, you're not going to get the flat pattern. Hopefully one of them you did. So I'm just going to um, also create a couple of views. And this is going to be kind of a jumbled mess, but I'm expecting that. And it brought them all in as flat patterns, so that wasn't quite the desired result. Uh, let's go ahead and we will set that one back to the default and back to the default and I'll get this organized a little bit better. The main thing is this is going to create a sub configuration inside of the part that has this flat pattern and that can be kind of handy. So uh, let's go ahead and change that view over to default. All right, so usually I just bring in the flat pattern and then I decide what views might be useful and uh, go from there. So since this is getting a little cluttered and long way, I'm going to rotate the view. And a little box pops up. And not giving me my, my angle. Alright, we'll try that again. There it goes. Oh, did something when I... Uh, and then hitting uh, enter tab will show you the preview and then I can apply it. So it gives me a little more room on the uh, the screen. And once I set the scale, that'll work out a little bit better. So if we go back and open this part, then come over to the configurations, I'm going to see an arrow and then there's going to be the default. So if you're familiar with sheet metal, when we do the, uh, the sheet metal, if I flatten this, that puts an actual change in this configuration and then unflatten it. Whereas if I have that default sheet metal, it is flattened just in that configuration and I can go back and forth without um, modifying or messing with any of the other, other geometry. And I don't think I need to save that. Nothing really, uh, nothing really changed there. Go through all the warnings, let it figure out what I just did. Well, that one, there it goes, took it a minute to update. All right, so with the flat pattern, we get the, um, the notifications that we have the bins down. Uh, there's always been a little bit of a point of contention. So, uh, pretty much the way that those, uh, those run. If we have reverse, then uh, they will also be labeled up if they go opposite ways. All right, so one more sheet. And then the, um, the model view will browse and we'll bring in 340. So pretty quickly we can get our, our first pass. I'm going to let you guys go through and do the ones that I jumped over. We do need to put in a detail view, so maybe I'll go back to, uh, to one of those. Okay, so my model view. And then this one should still be sheet metal since I did not put in... Oops, did not want to do that one. Got an extra... We'll bring in another model view. And it's already set to 340. And there's nothing under the default, so I haven't created the flat pattern. I'll accept the flat pattern, and then I'm going to place it. Okay, and let's go ahead and rotate that. And because this is an independent view and maybe a little more critical, I'm also going to change the, uh, the scale on it. So right now we are 1 to 2. I'm going to switch that one back to 1 to 1 by telling it it is a custom scale. And one to one, if I needed to make it three quarters, I could do a user defined and say three quarters. All right, so if we come out to the side, it's a little bit cluttered sitting on top of the part, and I want to add a leader, we'll come back and it'll pick about the midpoint of the bend line. 
that's interesting that it uh, deformed a little more. Oh, this was the example of across the bend and through the uh, through the geometry. So that makes sense that the geometry is a little bit uh, different. Let's <laughs> do it that way. All right. So on this one was modified. So the uh, the detail actually showed this line coming off uh, parallel to the base. That's going to increase the complexity of the manufacturing process. So we had to make a decision on the uh, the design if I need relief. Uh, am I going to make this more manufacturable, or do I, if I have to have that angle, it's going to make the part more expensive. All right. So we come over to our smart dimensions. Then we're dimensioning just like we've uh, we've done on the other parts. A whole call out. Those types of things are all going to go into the mix. All right. So. Uh, a couple of uh, things to be aware of then. Let's uh, jump back, see where I left off, and find something uh, kind of interesting here. So let's go ahead and uh, do the, the sheet dimension. So that globally changes uh, all of the, uh, the sizing. And if I decided that it was more... Um, Uh, a better view or a better layout to have one of these in section view, I could switch this over to the top view. It's going to warn me that everything's going to going to change. My top view then, I want to show some interior detail, so I'm just going to delete that view out. And back on the view layout, I can switch to a section view. Section view is going to be vertical or horizontal, and I'm just going to find a midpoint or something to attach to, and we can accept. And so that's not quite going the right way for our view. So if I flip the direction, then that looks a little bit better. And it's going to put in the uh, the hatch marks. And the hatch marks should update with the uh, the material selection since we haven't created any kind of material. Then uh, we're not really going to see that yet. If I need a detail, uh, let's find something interesting here to look at. So along that edge. And then we can pull out a detail view, and when I place it, then that detail view can be increased. So use a custom scale, and we'll go up to 2 to 1. All right, so maneuver those, something of interest along that, uh, that edge that I wanted to show. And then um, always kind of adjust these, the section AA, uh, that always looks a little bit weird on the proportions. We can go back up to the options and under the document properties and dimensions we're going to be able to find find those under the annotations. We'll have the balloons, the datums. Uh, where did that one end up at center lines? Now I know there's the uh, the settings for the section views so maybe that was under views. There we go section view and we haven't talked about layers so I need to do that real quick but I can set change the font we can change the sizing and the label and go through each of those, um, those geometries so I'm not concerned with the um, uh, the layers at this point um, if you have not turned layers on we can come up into any of the gray areas and search down through here and you'll find the layer if you check that it's going to turn this box on and with the layer when I click on this and this is something that I would want to save into the template so I didn't have to do this every time we're going to create a dims layer or something you know, whatever you want to call it and we'll pick a, uh, a color that uh, separates it while I'm doing this I'll create a, um, a center layer so center lines center marks and I usually uh, find something that's kind of uh, kind of bright for the detail. All right, so whichever one is selected, format is the default. And now when I go through and I'm in the um, the dim layer, I can set my dimension, and it's going to show up in the blue. When I set to the center layer, then we can set a center mark for our geometry. That's going to be okay. 
And then if I find I jump over to uh, another dimension and place it, it shows up, oh, it jumped back to the dims for me. So that was nice of it. Um, doesn't always do that, so I was just going to make the point that I'm going to position this down out of the way, uh, that if I highlight this, then on other tab, I can switch from center to, to dim, and I'm going to be able to change those colors or those properties to the mix. All right, so this will go uh, fairly quick. You know, the idea is just to get into the workflow, figure out the process, and be able to apply a few uh, dimensions and uh, create your detailed drawings.